Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm gonna do a two in one special. I'm going to be demonstrating this blanket in two different ways. I'm going to be using Brunette Velvet Plus and I'm going to uh, be demonstrating what you see in the picture. But for those that don't want to use that yarn or don't have access to that yarn I'm going to be demonstrating at the uh, middle part of this tutorial the same thing but using Super Saver Ombre. So Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. So this is the best of both worlds just in case you don't see exactly where the stitches need to go using the Bernat Velvet Plus at least middle way through you'll be able to see that. So without further ado let's just take a look at the instructions. It's just a one page and let's begin. If you're doing this blanket in the Bernat Velvet Plus you'll need nine balls in order to complete with a 10 millimeter size N crochet hook. Now if I was to do this in Red Heart Super Saver Ombre I would use probably a five and a half millimeter a size I crochet hook but I do not know how many balls of yarn that you'll do. Typically an afghan takes about seven balls but the Bernat Super or sorry the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre is about 10 ounces so maybe five balls of that in order to have a decent size. So we can change the size of this particular blanket and we'll be talking about that because the chain is only 57 but remember that we're using really thick yarn with a 10 millimeter hook. So just ignore this section here. It's a little diagram that I used in order to determine the instruction. So if you chain in an odd number like 57 or 59 or 61 you will always have this thing work out. So always chain in an odd number in order to get yourself to be balanced. So for the particular idea so this particular blanket is 44 inches wide by 50 inches using the Bernat Velvet Plus. So you may want to go ex extremely long when it comes to the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. What I would do is chain in an odd number until you get to the width that you would like to go and then you can stop. So as long as it's an odd number it'll work out for you. So without further ado I'm gonna head in now and we're gonna do the Bernat Velvet Plus as the first and you can see the video chapters of this particular one in the uh, video description and also the pinned comment if you'd like to uh, just jump ahead to the Super Saver version. So this is the Bernat Velvet Plus. So it's a lot bigger than regular velvet. And so we're going to begin. So just leave a tail on so that you can throw that through a tapestry needle which I'll demonstrate in just a few moments. So we're going to just put this on as a slip knot. So it's harder to see the stitches with this yarn. That's why I'm doing a two and one special. So remember that doesn't count as one. So you can either chain 57 to have exactly what you see or just chain in an odd count. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to just uh, chain 17. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16 and 17. So it's an odd number. It's all good to go and now we're going to uh, go on to row number one. So with your fingertips with this yarn you can actually feel where the um, chains are inside. So you just can be able to do that. So it's harder to demonstrate that on camera because it is a feel. So I'm gonna count to the fourth chain back. So here's one and then I can feel two, three and four. So when I go to the fourth one that's where I'm going to double crochet. So wrap the hook and double crochet into that one. So as soon as you get that first one marked or uh, pretty much located it's so much easier. So then I'm gonna go to the next one. So just use your fingertips and feel where the next one is going to be. And you're going to just double crochet yourself all the way back across. You should have an odd number of double crochets by the time you get back across. Okay, so that will always work out as long as you have an odd number. So please just double crochet on the chain all the way back to the beginning. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I've crocheted all the way across my chain. So I wanna verify that there's an odd number. So all you can just do is use your fingertips. You can actually feel. So there is a double crochet there. So, one, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So 15 is an odd number so it's good to go. So say you had 16 or, or an even number what you can just do is just back it out. So just uh, pull it out and then you can undo this uh, knot just one time and then that can uh, reduce that down for you. So we can, actually Jeannie does that when she designs but don't tell anybody she does that but it's a great way to be able to improvise if you have to. So we're going to turn our work and go on to row number two. In row number two we're going to just chain one and then just feel the open stitches at the top. So you're going to slam in 
one single crochet into each of the stitches going across. So this requires fingertips in order to have that. So it's like the Bernat Pip Squeak. All those uh, fun novelty yarns. You really do use your fingertips if anything to be able to use this yarn. So please do this all the way across and I'll be back in just a moment. When you get all the way to the other side don't forget this turning chain is an actual stitch as well. So go in the top of the turning chain. Don't go into a space. Just use your fingertips. You can feel it and you'll get that last one in so you have a flat edge. You're gonna turn your work and now we're going to do rows number, um, or row number three and let's begin that next. So let's begin row number three. So we're gonna create those um, texture that you see now and so we're going to chain three which will count as your first double crochet and so your next stitch just feel for it is the next one. So it's not this one where this is coming out of. It's the right here. So you wanna follow that all the way down to the double crochet that you see right directly below and you're going to do as a front post treble. So wrap the hook twice and coming around that post just pop it in through the back or from the front to the back and then back out to the front and then yarning over pulling it through. And then you're gonna pull through two, two and two and that makes up a treble. So that counts as this stitch that it's sitting in front of and behind and so you'll just single crochet, sorry you're gonna double crochet into the next stitch. And this gets much easier in the future because you'll be able to see these popping out even more. So you're going to then skip when you look at it. You did this one as a front post treble. So this one you're not gonna touch but you're gonna now go into the next one after that. So you're doing every other one down two rows below. And that's a tr uh, front post treble. So wrap that hook twice and then twos all the way back up. And then in the very next stitch you're going to double crochet. This is also called the alpine stitch just so you know. And so you're gonna do that all the way across. So every other stitch is jumping down and the stitches in between are staying on the top of the same row as a double crochet. So please do this all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of the row in just a moment. When you come to the other side I'm just gonna be jumping down one more time. So this is the one before the very end and I'm just keeping the right counts. Nothing special and the very last one is going to be a double crochet. So you can see that the texture has now been created on this side of the work. So what we have here is that this here is going to be the texture side. You can see it and the other side will remain flat. You're gonna turn your work now and we're going to begin row number four. Row number four is the same as number two. So every other row is exactly the same and so you're gonna chain up one and you're just going to zip across with a single crochet in the top of each of the stitches going across. This is what's creating those boundaries to jump over that creates that beautiful texture that you're looking for in this particular project. So just single crochet all the way across for row number four and I'll be right back. Go right to the end and uh, make sure that you go into that turning chain and I'll be right back in a second. So make sure that you do go into that turning chain right at the very end. Go into the chain work itself not into a space. And then you're gonna turn your work and begin the fifth row which is the final of the repeat. So the fifth row, let's talk about that. So the fifth row is going to be jumping down in between these sections here. Okay, so the double crochets that are in between, those is where you're going to concentrate. So you're gonna leave the ones that are popping out alone. So let's begin row number five. Chain up three, counts as a double crochet and because this is row number five, the very next one has to be a double crochet into the regular stitch work. Okay, now we're going to start jumping down. So find the one after the ones popping out here. It's right here. It's the third one in and that's where you're gonna do a front post treble around that one. And then the very next one and if you follow it straight up now, the very next one is just a double crochet. So really now that we have the orientation from what you see below, it's pretty easy to see where the stitches are going to go. So the next one dropping down is in between the two that are popping out. It's right here and it's a front post treble and you're gonna do that all the way across. So then you'll double crochet on the row and then front post treble and the one in between. Please do this all the way across. This is row number five. 
So because this is row number five, the last two stitches that are left will each be a double crochet. So just remember that the first two started off with two double crochets in a row. So the chain three plus the double crochet was next and then you drop down. So when you go to repeat the pattern now, the pattern repeat is now two through five once again. So two will be a single crochet. Then three is here. So you'll see these dropping down here and then four is a, is um, a single crochet and then five is this all over again. So I'm just going to take you through rows number two and three one more time just so that you understand coming down in. So just turn your work and let's begin row number two. So just chain and just chain one and just single crochet across the tops for row number two and then I'll be back in a second for row number three. So go right to the end and make sure you go into that turning chain as I've indicated before. So row number two is complete. I've already turned. So row number three we're going to come back down and just see have it here. You can see it's just exactly like this. So you're going to chain three which will count as your first double and then the very next one is going to be just follow it straight on down and it's before this one pops out and that's gonna be your front post treble. So it reminds me of my, the sandbars of the beach of uh, Sobble Beach in Lake Huron. That's what it reminds me of. So the next one will be a double crochet and then the next one jumps down in between where the other two are popping. So it's right here and that's a front post treble. So you just have to continue to do this pattern over and over and over. So just rows number two through five and you can have this particular blanket. This will grow really quickly because of the size of the yarn and the thickness of the hook and so it's one of those projects that you could probably even finish over a couple days. Um, if you have the yarn on hand and you'll be blazing through. So I will show you just in case you need to know on how to fasten this off and then I'll be moving to the super saver example with ombre in a few more moments from now. So at the end of row number three don't forget the one just before the end is a front post treble just like it was when we did it before. So it maintains that and then you're gonna double crochet in the final. So you're gonna repeat rows number two through five over and over and over. When you're finally finished with the height that you want, would like it to be, it's suggesting to go uh, up to 50 inches. The final round has to be a single crochet, uh, sorry the final row is a single crochet. So chain up one and then you're just going to single crochet across the top and then you're officially done so that it has the balance and it looks like the very beginning. So just single crochet across and then I'll show you how to fasten off. So once you're ready and you're ready to finish just cut this yarn. Now you'll need an eye of a needle that will be able to get this through. So just pull this through the final loop to lock it. Now it's almost like my dog, uh, puppy dog. Um, there's a lot of fluff here but the actual core is actually really quite small. So you should be able to use a regular size needle in order to force that through. You'll be surprised. It's all bark and no bite. So what we have here is that we're just going to turn it to the wrong side and you'll do this with any of the loose ends that you have and just come into the inside of the work. Go about an inch, an inch and a half and pull it but do not change the shape of your project and then go through a slightly different path using your fingertips. Stay on the inside of the project. Go through the second time and then third time another slightly different path going back. And this should never follow it on you. Okay so once you get that cut you can go right down in and you'll wanna do that with any loose ends that you have and this would be how you do it. So without further ado we're gonna move on to the super saver example just in case this was too hard for you to follow. So let's begin again. I'm gonna use Red Heart Super Saver Ombre that transitions slowly through the color line. So um, I'm gonna guess that you may need five balls for this particular example to do a blanket. It could be more but uh, what we want to do is chain in an odd count and then chain the, the width of the blanket that you would like to do and that's kind of a neat. So you see it on the sample here how it's changing color. This will also do the same and it will do a pretty cool job as well. So use a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook as my recommendation and we're going to begin this all over again but using the other yarn instead so it's easier to see the stitch work. So let's begin again. So I don't have an actual chain count for the blanket so what you wanna do is a chain and an odd number. So just keep counting until you get an odd number and then you can stop. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. So 17 is an odd number, right? So if you want it bigger, then all you just have to do is keep on going. You can just lay it down on something if you'd like to match your sofa or a bed and that's how you would be able to do that. So let's now progress to row number one. In row number one, we're going to go four chain from the hook so you can actually see it this time. So one, two, three and get the back hump. I didn't suggest that for the uh, for the Velvet Plus because of the fact that is you can't even tell. So what I want to do is just back hump and I want to double crochet and staying on the back hump all the way across your chain just double crochet itself. Now when you count those double crochets which includes this chain that you just created so you technically see three, you should have an odd number count when you get over there. So that should work out for you. So please just double crochet across the chain for row number one. So coming all the way across, I should, should count an odd number of double crochets which I do. It just in case you have an even number, you can always just like I mentioned in the Bernat Velvet, you can just say just subtract one out if you need to have that so it's an odd number and then you can just undo this knot there just one time in order to go smaller. It's kind of how we design behind the scenes too. So we're going to turn our work and begin rows number two through five which is the repeat of this pattern. So rows number two and four are always the same. You're just gonna chain up one and you're just going to put in a single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. So this is row number two. Just one single crochet in each stitch. I'll see you at the end of this row in just a moment. When you get all the way to the other side, see this turning chain? You gotta include that. So don't go into a space itself but go right into the turning chain and so therefore you won't lose any counts. So new crochets tend to forget that's there or they don't see it. So that's how you keep a straight edge. So you're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number three. In row number three, we're going to start up and we're gonna chain three which will be your first double crochet and I want you to come and look at this one down here and that's where your next stitch is. It's around this post. So you're gonna do a front post treble. So you're just gonna wrap that hook twice and then coming into the side of that same post, stay on the front and you're gonna pull through and then pull through two, two, two and that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of on the burnout velvet I couldn't show you that but th that's what it means. So the very next stitch is where you're going to double crochet and so now that we have this established every other one is going to be this front post treble. So this one right here where my thumb is moving that's the next one. So wrap the hook twice and coming into the front. This is also called the alpine stitch. So you'll double crochet into the next one. So if you're not sure, turn it. This one here is the same one that it's sitting in front of. So it's the second one over is where you'll double crochet. Okay, so then skipping the next one, come down and if you're not sure just lean it forward and you can see one and two. So it's the second one and technically if you're, if you're skilled at this, you'll be able to come down and you'll know instantly that the next one that you see right here is the actual double crochet. And you're gonna do this all the way across and this is row number three. So as you get closer to the other side, the one before the edge is the one you're gonna jump down to. There's no extra special math. It's just a matter of doing every other one like we showed you before. And then the very last one is just a double crochet. So in row number three, these are closer to the edge than you'll see in number five. So turn your work and let's begin row number four. In row number four, you're going to chain one and you will put in one single crochet in each. So this is the same as row number two. So just remember every other row is a single crochet and it allows you to be able to play on the front side. So the texture is only on the front side of the work and the back side that you're looking at now, there's no texture. It's just completely flat. So just go all the way across for row number four and you need to make sure you go into that turning chain that's at the end. So that turning chain right here, you're gonna go right into the chain work itself to keep that. So don't forget that's there and turn your work and we're going to begin row number five. So the last part of the repeat is row number five. So see where this is jumping out in front of and the other one's not. So in row number five, it's always the third one that's going to be the one that we start jumping down into. So the first two are always gonna be double crochet and the last two will always be double crochet. So just keep that in mind. And you'll see this um, 
you'll be able to put down the pattern later. Uh, meaning that you'll remember that. So you're going to chain three. That counts as your first double. See this one's jumping out. So you want to double into the one that's right there. And then where these two are jumping out you're going to play with the one that's not jumping. And that, that'll be your front post treble there. And that will pull it up which creates the look that we're going for. So the next one here is going to be a double. If you're not sure just lean it back uh, forward. See it's the second one. So this one is the same one it's in front of. The second one is where the double crochet is. Okay so the next one has to jump down. It's a front post treble. Okay and then the next one is a double. And again lean it forward if you have to. If you don't see those. And this is creating the texture in between the other two um, front post troubles that are already there and below. And so you'll continue all the way across. And just remember the very final two stitches of this are just double crochets. So row number five doesn't go all the way to the edge like row number three did. Okay so then you're just going to come on down like that. So I'm going to just demonstrate. So we actually have to finish off on a row number two to finish the whole project off. But I'm going to demonstrate rows number two and three one more time just to make sure you got it. So row number two just turn your work. Chain one and single all the way across. And whatever you do just don't forget that last turning chain. If any big comments that we get on anything is the turning chain that people miss. And then so the turning chain go right into the turning chain. Then you turn your work and then begin row number three. So chain up three to begin. So three starts off with the treble near to the edge. So it's the second one in. And you see where these two are jumping? So it's the one before it. It's going to be the front post treble. And then you double into the next. Again you can lean it forward if you don't see that. Okay so the ones that are not jumping out and the ones that are sinking in behind are the ones that you are doing the front post treble and it's every other stitch. And then that will pull it out of the background which will make the texture of the alpine stitch that we're going for in this particular example. See that? So as I mentioned the very final row to finish off this blanket there is no border. People are gonna message I wanna do a border. Just probably do a single crochet around just to get yourself established with putting three single crochets in a corner if you're going to. The pattern is not designed to have it but that doesn't mean you can't do it. I think anything is possible with crochet if you're determined enough. So just improvise and play. So this is row number three. So the one just before the edge is going to be a front post treble. And then the very last stitch is a double. And then if you're saying you're done and you're happy with the height of it or the length of your blanket just chain up one and just put in single crochets all the way across. So you're finishing on technically on row number two. So you'll do two through five, two through five. You'll get to the height that you want and then just um, do uh, row number three once again or row number two once again sorry. And then you will have a nice counterbalance to this particular project. So with the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre you'll have a color transition going on that's ever so slight and it's gonna be amazing. And then once you're done you'll be good to go. So let's just show you how to fasten off. So just pull it through and turn it to the back side of the work. So put it with a tapestry needle. I used to be able to weave these in like when I was young but they always fall out even when you're not even washing. So just put it through a tapestry needle. Go through once and then twice and then three and then three times. So back and forth three times you want to do this with any loose ends that you'll have and therefore they should never follow it on you. 
and that would be how you do this seriously snugly. <laughs> seriously snugly crochet blanket and it's really neat. The texture is there and I think no matter which way you go it's going to be an amazing time. So have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.